How's it going? Can you describe the, the dynamics of how play calling is going in the defensive side? Obviously, you're doing that now. How does that work? And, and you kind of caught off guard when Brian asked you to do it. Uh, it's sort of a group effort, you know, um, uh, particularly game day. I mean, uh, just sorting through adjustments and, and uh, you know, we're all in the meetings together throughout the week and, and kind of put a call sheet together and what we like in certain situations. So in a lot of ways, the game calls itself. And then it's, um, you know, again, a group effort um, during the game on the sideline and, and on the headsets to get things adjusted and, and see what calls we like. So it's really been a group effort. How have you seen the defense and, and what are your biggest concerns still? Um, you know, I, I think we've seen uh, improvement in some areas, um, but, you know, we'll really be tested getting into league play. Um, you know, just trying to play fast and, and be consistent, um, you know, just looking for um, Im- improvement in our execution of our schemes. Uh, fourth row left, Colin Gabe, Riley. How have you seen your secondary? Kind of, I mean, especially with all the young guys that you guys have. I mean, how have you seen kind of them improve, kind of rally around this kind of youth movement? That you've seen guys like Denzel Burke, mm-hmm. uh, Cam Martinez. Like, how have you seen kind of that room change based on kind of the youth movement that you guys have? Yeah, I mean, you know, if you're if you're in that room every day, you, you're not surprised. Um, you know, the the our, our veteran players are uh, extremely talented, and and so are our young players. And our young players um, have worked uh, extremely hard for for months now. Um, you know, coming off of last season. Some of the guys, particularly the guys you mentioned, um, you know, really had had great growth through the spring and, and continued it uh, throughout the summer. So it's been it's been fun to watch all that hard work uh, come to fruition for them. How much of an impact, especially this past week, um, you see the emergence of a little bit more of a pass rush? And I'm curious about how the secondary kind of responded to the ability for a defensive line to get to the quarterback, the linebackers to get to the quarterback. How did they? I mean, did they see kind of more opportunities come their way because of that amount of pressure, or, or how, how did that, uh, you know, change the secondary? Yeah, I mean, you know, that that's kind of what we preach in, uh, in the defensive unit meetings is, is uh, you can't play defense in a vacuum. You know, there's no, um, there's no LeBron of defensive football. I mean, it truly takes all 11 guys. It's not just one person that can kind of overtake the game. Um, so it's, you know, there are times when um, – our secondary makes a play as a result of a, as a result of a uh, a ball that was forced by a quarterback due to pressure, and there are times when uh, our our defensive line gets home, our our pass rush gets home because the the secondary has made the col- the quarterback hold the ball for an extra count. So, just trying to work together and understanding that, you know, if uh, if we have success on defense, that you know whoever got credit for making the play, there were likely ten other guys that made major contributions to that success. Yeah. How challenging is it as a coach to, to be patient with freshmen, uh, both in, in performance on the field, but also maturity and, and leadership? And, and how does that dynamic work when you also have some seniors and upperclassmen? How do they work together? Yeah, uh, it's it's challenging. I, I know. I think um, you know. You mentioned it's as much off the field as it is on the field, and. Um, you know, we know that, that if your habits aren't great off the field, then, then that will rear its head in, in the games uh, on the field. So constant effort to, uh, to be managing those habits, and, and some are further along than others. Um, and it definitely helps to have some, some veteran guys in the room that, that have seen it all before and kind of been through it and, and, and made some of the mistakes that the younger guys are making so they can help give them some, um, you know, some, some guidance. So, but a challenge. When do you see guys stop being squirrely? <laughs> as, as um, not as soon as you like, and I, I can tell you that. No, um, yeah, hard to put it put the time on it. Um, you know, uh, different for every guy, but um, I think sometimes it depends on on how soon they they realistically see themselves having a chance to be a major contributor, and sometimes that maybe makes you grow up a little faster. Second row right, Tim May, Leatherman Row. Uh, as you watch Denzel Burke after last week compared to going into the first week, where have you just seen big progress in him? I, obviously, he was good enough to start in the opener, but what, what have you seen that you've really liked about his progress? Yeah, I mean, you know, Denzel's got uh, uh, a rare skill set, and he's another guy, and he works really hard at it. And, and those of us that were able to, to watch him in the spring are not surprised by the success that he's had. Um, we saw all that ability and and. You know, you see uh, the product on Saturday, Saturday afternoon or Saturday evening, and you know we see the process 
um, you know, Tuesday for 30 to 45 minutes after the rest of the, the field is, you know, the rest of the guys have gone in the locker room. So, um, you know, there's no substitution for in-game experience and, and seeing the, the speed of the game and how it moves and playing in the shoe and playing on the road and those types of things. So I think just, you know, um, there's a degree of, of, uh, of execution that comes with, with seeing it, you know, over, over and over again and having some experience. So I've been very pleased with Denzel. Yeah, and Matt, uh, when, when, when Coach Day came, came to you guys after the second game and said, you know, i got to make some changes here, was that a big gulp moment for you too? I mean, and just how, how do you – how would you describe how you all as a group, a defensive coaching group, handle that transition? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I, I think it was a, um, a, a humbling time and, and, and still is for, for all of us. Um, you know, very high expectations here at Ohio State, and, and rightfully so. Um, so, you know, it, it was a change, and it, it continues to be a change for all of us. And, you know, this is something that we are arm in arm in um, as a defensive staff and as a, as a coaching staff. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, we are um, in a relentless pursuit of how to get it right and how to improve. And really, that's all we are focused on. Did you come into that armed with already with ideas of some things that you even thought needed to have a shake up or a change? Um, you know, I think everyone, uh, every coach has things that they see maybe slightly differently, and and just you know sometimes it's it's just, it can be just a little thing or as much as anything, it's a comfort level. There are only so many hours in a day, and and you know you count it whether it's you know little things like how you script practice or you know, whatever it may be. Just not that not that it you know, needed to be changed in some areas, but sometimes it's just, well, this, I'm a little more comfortable doing it this way and, and you know, those, those types of things. So uh, there's a couple things that, that maybe have, have uh, changed in the day-to-day, -day and, and, uh, but, again, we're, we're sort of, um, you know, all working in chorus on how to get it right. Uh, second row left, Nathan Baer, Cleveland.com. Matt, what happened with Seven Banks this season, and uh, why has he not been very involved and what more do you guys need to see from him to get him to where I assume you all thought he would be this season? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, it's easy to, to overlook the fact that, that Seven, you know, missed all of the spring um, with a knee setback and something that he had battled for quite a long time and battled that through the summer um, and then had a setback when he got to camp. So, um, you know, I, I think if, if – you know, I don't get the luxury of watching a ton of NFL, but I see the ticker just when I walk by the TV, and I always see, you know, so-and-so out four to six weeks with this and that or the other. And, you know, there's a timetable to get back. I think when you're, when you're injured, no matter how much experience you have, there's a, there's a timetable to, to get back to where you were, particularly when over the course of, you know, months, you've missed a significant amount of football. And to just say that you're going to jump right back in when you really – are kind of battling your way back through an injury. I don't. I don't think that's fair to expect any anybody to just jump right back in and and you know be, you know right, right at their best right away. Uh, but we've seen seven improve every week as he's got healthier and healthier and healthier. And um, his attitude's been great. And um, you know he has played well here in uh, in uh, this last game. Um, for Ronnie Hickman, why do you think he's been able to have the impact he has and when? You guys were looking for what was going to happen in Bullet. Why was he a guy that made so much sense there? Well, he's had an impact because he's a great football player um, and he works extremely hard at it. But, you know, again, I think some of his success is, uh, is as a result of, of you know, a, a group of, uh, of, you know, 10 other players that are, that are buying in and, and executing their job. You know, his interception the other night comes as a, uh, as a result of a, um, you know, a quarterback that's been flushed out of the pocket by a defensive pass rush. And, um, but Ronnie's a fantastic football player. And again, if you'd, you know, if you'd seen what he had done in the spring and all through camp, and you, you know, you're not surprised by how well he's played, um, you know, thus far. Uh, right next door, Doug Lamarie, Cleveland.com. Continuing with Ronnie, mm -hmm. um, seems the last couple games he's been deep a little more often from that bullet position. Obviously, you guys are adjust to what an offense is doing, right? If they have four mm -hmm. wides or if they have two tight ends on the field or whatever. But sure. what uh, what is it in Ronnie's skill set that the times when he's been in the box in that bullet role, he can do that. Now he's back deep more. 
how much have his responsibilities changed sort of in if you guys have shifted some things with the defense the last couple of well, years? Well, I think, you know, you, you, you hit on it. Um, a lot of what we do is dependent upon what the offense does. And, and um, you know, we got in that, in that Tulsa game and it became a, a throw fest, you know. Um, so we played uh, some different coverages and, um, you know, we, we had some, some success early on in the Akron game and uh, our offense was rolling. So, again, be, quickly became a pass-tilted game in, in uh, Saturday night as well. Um, so, you know, when it's a pass-tilted down, we, we can be a little bit more uh, flexible uh, with some of our coverages. But, you know, Ronnie's a, a versatile player, and that's kind of why we had him targeted for that bullet roll where, you know, one snap he can be uh, down around the box playing a run, and the next snap he can be in the deep part of the field. And this comes up, I'm sure, with lots of players. When you, what a player does best, where he would best fit on the defense, versus what the team might need from him, right? Sometimes that matches up, maybe sometimes it's a little different. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering specifically, Lathan Ransom starts the year at cover safety. Josh is, is at deep safety. Josh gets hurt. Cam Martinez gets a chance and shows he looks pretty good. Now, last week, Lathan is back at deep safety. Mm -hmm. Just that kind of thing as you're trying to fit the skills of players to what you need. What's that decision-making process like? And specifically, what's it been like with where Lathan best helps this defense? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, you, you've got to be fluid, and, and it's a constant effort to get the best players uh, on the field and, and, um, and be aware of, of your overall depth. And, you know, we, we kind of had a little bit of a – um, a log jam there at cover safety with three really good players. And then, you know, when we lost Josh, um, felt like maybe that, you know, gave it, uh, needed to, to, to provide some depth at that position. And, and you know, again, if you're just, if you're just ranking and, and looking at overall, okay, how do we get our best guys on the field? We felt like, um, you know, that gave us a chance to, uh, um, to, to move some guys around and, and, and you know, try to prevent a, one guy having to play uh, you know, 90 snaps in a game. I mean, I, you know, Bryson Shaw has played uh, outstanding this year, but uh, don't think anybody can can go, you know, 90 plays uh, a game for a whole season, you know, uh, as well as he's played. So it just felt like uh, with three guys playing well and, and practicing well at cover safety and, and just getting thinned out at free safety, that move made sense. Uh, Sacramento Middle, Dave Biddle, 24-7 Sports. Hi, Matt. Um, a lot of coaches who call plays swear that they want to be, you know, swear by being in the press box. They say they see the field so much better. Other guys prefer being on the field. Mm -hmm. Why do you like being on the field? Uh, I just think, uh, one, you get a little bit more of a feel for the game, um, particularly tempo. Um, you know, sometimes you kind of get lost in the box um, of, you know, you're kind of up there and it's, you know, it's it's heated or it's air conditioned, and, and you kind of just you know watching. And, and but when you're you're down on the field, you feel the the urgency of the situation. Um, and then you know the the probably the biggest thing for me um, is uh, on the field. You you can you know you can really be hands on with how you adjust the game um, from series to series. Where you know in the box. Um, you can be effective in providing information, but it's it's hard to, you know, you're not the one, you're not articulating those adjustments to um, to the players, and and um, you know we know how important that is, and, and fortunately, um, e even though we've changed, you know, moved some things around with our game day, our uh, our game day operation, our um, our information from the press box has been extraordinary. We've we've really seen everything that we needed to see, and and uh, been able to adjust it pretty well. Typically, I would think that would be the head coach's call, but yeah. in 2019, um, Coach Day had no problem with uh, Jeff Halfley calling the plays from the box. So I assume that's your call, right? That if you wanted to be in the box, you would be, but you prefer being on the um, field. Yeah, accurate? just you know, kind of a group, a group decision and, and just looking at, OK, what makes sense? Who can do this? Who can do that? You know, the NCAA will only allow uh, so many people to be on headsets and, and you know, those types of things. So it, it was a. Uh, um, you know, a, a big conversation, and and uh, we just felt like that was, you know, got the right pieces in the right places for us. Four from the left, Bill Landis, the athletic. Matt, um, with, with the way you guys have mixed coverages the last couple of weeks, and what Doug was asking about aligning too high a little more than anything it had previously, when you guys assessed sort of what needed to be tweaked or, or changed, how important was it to make sure that that pre snap picture, I guess, for the opposing quarterback wasn't so static with that post safety always in the middle? Yeah, um, you know, I, I think it's 
disguise is such a big part of the game, um, and you know, being uh, being able to affect the decision makers on offense, whether it's the offensive coordinator or uh, the quarterback, you know, being able to affect those guys with with pre snap and uh, pre snap uh, disguises and, and and some different options. Uh, in today's football, you know, it's so important. Um, so you know, we uh, and again, some of that was just based on what we were getting the last two weeks from those opponents, um, you know, allowed us to be, you know, maybe more multiple in some of those areas. But uh, it'll be a constant assessment of, of what we're playing well, what's the right mix um, to, pre to present some different pictures, um, you know, and, and uh, uh, constant awareness of, of, you know, what we need to defend and, and how to make a team left-handed first. And with the way you guys play zone, um some of the guys last week were talking about it just kind of takes reps to get comfortable with that, particularly the underneath guys. Um, just how have you seen them come along, and do you feel like they're getting better in terms of spacing and understanding concepts? Yeah. Um, again, it's a younger group, so with every game rep, you know, every every day we see improvement. Um, no substitute for for in game experience, and and you start to learn how. Um, the trends of how offenses are planning to attack you, and and you start to recognize some similarities, and and um, you know, can anticipate. So, but they're uh, coming along well. Mm -hmm. Second on the right, Austin Ward, Larry Monroe. Matt, I mean, am I wrong? Did you also have this same situation at Maryland the last year, where you weren't identified as the coordinator, but were calling plays? Uh, a similar scenario, yeah. So. <laughs> It's unorthodox, at least, you know, that's not the way most teams do it, but you've been part of it twice. Do you just have like a magic voice or something? Do you enunciate more clearly? Like, how are, how are you getting these roles? Um, I have a great answer for you, brother. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, you, you, um, whether, whether the previous opportunity or, or this one, you know, um, However they come about, you know, you just are uh, in, in uh, constant pursuit of, of, of how to get it right. So um, however they shake out to you, um, and you just you have to find every resource you can. And, and our, you know, our defensive staff has been awesome. You know, some things have shaken out and been a little different. Um, but I, I give everybody in that room credit, um, you know, that uh, we, we've rallied together and um, in in, uh, in heavy pursuit of, of getting better every week and, and uh, playing great defense. This might be easier then to get Court Williams maybe back involved and what what he might give you if he could stay on this track to get healthier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean Court's a stud, great player, um, one of the most impressive young men that uh, that I've ever been around. Um, playing better and better, he's another guy that I don't think you can fully appreciate. <laughs> probably goes without saying, but you get good at football by playing football, you know, and just Court has missed so much time um, due to injury. But now that he's kind of back in the swing of things and, and had a chance to get his feet feet wet in a game last week and, and played some really good snaps and has practiced really well um, and has always been really dialed in. So I would look for uh, Court Williams' stock to, to continue to rise. Got time for just a few more. Over here far right, Tony uh, Gerfman, Buckeye School. Matt, is, is the secondary now, do you think it's settled in terms of players and their roles with Cam Martinez stepping up and, and Lathan Ransom moving back? Do you feel like it's, it's set? Um, I mean, again, it, it, it will always be fluid based on who we have available for the game and, and you know, what personnel groupings we're defending and, and things like that. And, um, you know, keeping in mind that, that – um, you know, practice is a huge part of it, and, and the guys that, that go practice the best and the most consistent will, will get opportunities, and um, and then those that play well in the game will get opportunities. But I think we're in a pretty good place uh, at the moment. And then I know you weren't surprised by Denzel Burke because you saw him in the spring, but at some point you had to be. <laughs> well, we were surprised in the spring. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, he's, he's unbelievable. Um, you know, his patience and um, – you know, he's got uh, somewhere he stole a ton of reps, you know, but uh, he's he's got a very bright future. Yeah. Yep. Second row right, uh, Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. 
Matt, uh, back at Maryland with you in, in 2018, were there things you were able to, to learn then calling defense that's able to help you now? Yeah, I think it's like anything else. It's like, you know, I just said, you know, playing, best way to get better at playing football is to play football. I think the best way to improve calling defense is to call defense, you know, and, and um, somebody asked a question earlier about um, you know, were there things that you wanted to do differently or things that you like and, you know, it, some of that stuff is is hard to really say until you get in, the, you know, until you get out there calling it and you're like, boy, I really wish I had that, you know, coverage or that pressure right now and then get back in there on Sunday and it's like, okay, maybe let's let's get that one going a little bit. So, um, so you know, hopefully we'll we'll uh, continue to see improvement as we go. But um, you know, learn some valuable lessons that year in 2018 and uh, learning with every play right now. Kind of a follow up on the Lathan going back to free safety, mm -hmm. chicken and egg situation. What came first? Did Cam Martinez start playing well enough for you guys to feel comfortable to move Lathan, or was it more just because Josh Proctor got hurt and you felt like you needed to, you know, change some things up back there? Uh, you know, a little of both. Um, you know, um, we had we rep a lot of guys a lot of places. You know, that's kind of the nature of how spring works, hey, so-and-so's down today with a hamstring. It's like, okay, well, we got to move this guy here and that guy there. You can't have three guys at one position and one guy at one position. You know, it just doesn't – you can't practice that way. You can't, you know, not – not somebody gets dinged in the game, now you got nobody there. So you're constantly moving guys around. We've seen Lathan at free safety, you know, many practices. And um, and we've seen Cam Martinez practice and, and, and scrimmage very well and, and obviously played very well in the Tulsa game. Um, and then, you know, played played well Saturday night. So, um, you know, it, it's just a, a constant evaluation of, of your personnel and, and you know, um, what you need to defend and, and how to get the right guys in the right spots. There were a lot of guys off this offseason. Seven, Cam missed some time. Name anybody else, which meant a lot of these young guys got extra reps that mm -hmm. maybe they wouldn't have gotten. Are you seeing that kind of pay off right now with maybe some of these older guys struggling while some of these younger guys are maybe kind of progressing every week? You know, definitely the younger guys um, because they're very talented and, and we're just, again, they'll get better with every rep. Um, you know, it, it's it's hard for me to, to, to say, well, the older guys are struggling. I, I just, you know, if you see what these guys are we're dealing with and the injuries that they're, you know, been battling and the things that they've had to overcome and the amount of time that they've lost, you know, I, um, you know, Guys in the major leagues, I mean, they, they get an injury and they, they go down to the minors to get right. You know, like that's, that's just kind of how the body works. You know, you, you can't just snap your fingers and, you know, touch your toes and, and you're back to 100%. You know, you got to you gotta work your way back, you know, and that's that's how it goes. So I, I don't know that the older guys are, were struggling so much as they just, you know, they've had to overcome a ton of adversity and have gotten better and grinded and pushed through and been tough. And, and now they're getting to back to, you know, where we know they can be. Mm -hmm. Matt, I um, I want to build off a question maybe was asked earlier. You know, you you always hear coaches tell players you got to be ready when your numbers call, mm -hmm. right? And and as a coaching staff, you guys had a plan coming into the year that obviously changed. I'm sure when we last talked to you in, in camp, you weren't expecting to be calling plays early in the season. How, how do you stay ready to to fill into an opportunity that maybe you didn't foresee um, a couple games into the year? Yeah, um, you know, I, I've been very fortunate to be around a lot of great football coaches, and, and there are a ton of great football coaches in our defensive staff room right now. And um, I've said it before, I think one of my <laughs> one of my better qualities, I'm a pretty low ego guy. So, I, you know, when someone has a good idea, I say, hey, that's a good idea. Why don't we do that? Um, someone has a great call in a critical situation in the game, I'm like, yeah, all right, let's call that. That's a That's a heck of an idea. Um, uh, so, you know, been very fortunate over the, the last decade or so to be around some very, very uh, intelligent and, and skilled football coaches, and I stole everything that I could steal from them, and I'm still around a whole bunch of really good football coaches, and when they have great ideas, I say, yeah, let's do that, so. I know you guys are all pulling the rope in the same direction, but how much do you feel that this is an evaluation of you and your ability as a coordinator moving forward here? Um, I don't really feel that way. I, I, I totally appreciate the question. Um, it, it's such a group deal. I mean, I, I love I love your analogy. You know, we're we're all pulling the same direction, and and I think it's 
you know, we're all in this thing together and, um, you know, I'm going to help in every way that I can. But at the end of the day, uh, we will we will succeed because we do it together. So. back to, to seven. Um, obviously, the injury puts him in a tough spot, but he comes back. There are guys that have jumped ahead of him, it seems, on the depth chart. He gets to play this past week, but how do you make sure you don't lose an older guy like that when, when a situation comes up where maybe all of a sudden he's, he's back from injury, but he's not playing as much as he would want to? Mm -hmm. we, we've seen guys that, that can get lost in the shuffle, and then things don't go their way. How do you keep him engaged and ready to go so when you have a chance to play like he did on Saturday, he's, he's good to step up there and be the player? Well, seven's a pro, uh, I'll tell you that. Um, I mean, even when he was hurt and like out, 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 you know, camp, he couldn't, you know, when he got dinged, he, he couldn't, couldn't do anything. And he was locked in, notepad out every meeting, coach another. I mean, he's just, a, he's a stud. He's a stud. Um, so I haven't had, you know, I haven't had to say a whole lot. You know, he, he knows what a great player he is. We know what a great player he is. And, you know, again, just, I've been uh, extremely impressed with how he's grinded through it. And despite the fact that he you know, hasn't been all the way healthy, he's continued um, to just fight and fight and fight and been a great leader and, and uh, um, has, again, played, played better and better every single day. So.